We had a bumpy ride while the captain took us to Genovese Island. We're anchored in Darwin Bay, a sunken caldera of the volcano that created this island. This island is the bird island for its many nesting bird species. On the beach are swallow-tailed gulls, the only completely nocturnal gull. They prey on squid and small fish that rise to the surface at night. Also on the coral and sand beach is the appropriately named ruddy turnstone. In the salt bushes beside the beach are nesting frigate birds. Male frigate birds have a red guller sac that they inflate to attract a mate. The sheen of the feathers on the back of the male frigate bird identify them as either a great frigate with green or a magnificent with purple. Females have a white breast. The eye ring is red for great frigate and blue for magnificent. Juveniles have a rusty white breast and head. Nests are a platform of loosely woven sticks. The chicks are not very cute. Only one egg is laid each breeding season. Fledging occurs after four to six months, but fledglings continue to receive parental care for an additional five to 14 months, depending on ocean conditions and food supply. The frigates share their nesting bushes with red-footed boobies. The red-footed booby is the smallest of the booby and gannet family, about 28 inches long with a three-foot wingspan. There are several color morphs. The brown morph is dominant here. But there are some of the white morph also. Not to be confused with the Nazca booby, also here, with black face and feet. The boobies lay a single egg in a stick nest. It will hatch in 45 days. It'll be three months for the chicks to fledge. The juveniles have gray faces and feet. It will take five more months until they make extensive flights. So in the meantime, the awkward teenagers hang around the rocks with their peers. Venturing further away from the beach, we find four species of Darwin's finches that we've not seen before. The gray warbler finch doesn't look at all like the ground finches, but it is one of Darwin's 14 species of finch. The warbler finch evolved to eat insects instead of seeds like the ground finches or cactus like the cactus finches. The large ground finch is the largest of the Darwin finches, both in total size and in size of beak. The large short beak evolved to crack open seeds. Compare that to the large cactus finch with a totally different shaped beak. This allows them to eat cactus flowers, fruit, and pads. The large cactus finch only exists on four islands. It does not cohabitate with the common cactus finch. The sharp-beaked ground finch is one of the smallest of the Darwin finches. They evolved to eat both insects and seeds. On the way back to the beach, we spot the rarest gull in the world, the lava gull. They're only found on four islands of the Galapagos. The population is estimated at three to 600 individuals. Back at the beach, waiting for the zodiacs to take us back to the queen, we watch the juvenile red-footed boobies hanging out until they are big enough and strong enough to start their life on the open ocean. Then back to the Queen of Galapagos for a mid-morning snack and our wetsuits. Sherry takes a short zodiac cruise around the walls of the caldera. This cactus looks lush but precarious. The marine iguanas are right at home. The swallow-tailed gulls nest on the holes in the wall. Meanwhile, I'm taking a look at the wall from underwater, but it's a bit murky. There are a few new fish, but nothing to get too excited about. So back to the Queen for lunch and a siesta. This afternoon, we're climbing Prince Philip's steps for a hike across the plateau.
The steep steps are named for Prince Philip of England, who visited him in 1965 and again in 81. We're expecting to see a Galapagos short-eared owl. But this is too easy. He's waiting for us at the top of the steps. Near the steps is a Nazca booby nesting area. They nest on the bare ground with maybe a few sticks. This one looks like it just hatched. The Nazca boobies think they own this part of the island. He finally moved off the trail after we all got too many pictures. There are more Darwin finches here too. He deftly shows how to use that big beak. The sharp beak variety is here too. But this marine iguana must be lost. Overhead are red-billed tropic birds. They don't nest in colonies, so we're not likely to come upon a nest, but they're here. Those little black dots buzzing around are storm petrels, the Jesus birds we watched feed. And this is where they nest, in the crevices in the lava rock. But they need to be quick, because this owl is trying to catch them, going or coming out of their nest. We leave the owls to their business and make our way back through the Nazca booby nesting area. Then down the steps to the waiting zodiacs and to the queen and dinner. Last night, the captain took us south, back over those same bumpy seas from the night before. We're anchored in Sullivan Bay between San Bartolome Island and Santiago Island. Our first activity this morning is to climb to the top of Bartolome Island. The volcanic cone is 374 feet high, and the trail is all boardwalk to protect against erosion. This island is completely different giving us some insight into how a bare volcanic island becomes a plant-covered home to birds and other animals. Gray mat plant is one of the first plants to appear on the arid, ash-covered volcanic slopes. The lava lizard appear when there are insects, ants, and beetles to feed on. And Darwin finches pioneer when appropriate food is available, a rest stop, and a chance for Omar to answer our questions. The boardwalk is flanked by spatter cones. The lava cactus is another pioneer species. There's our objective, the summit. This island is the most visited and the most photographed in the Galapagos. The final push to the top. And the payoff, a spectacular view of Bartolome and Santiago Island. and the most photographed scene in the Galapagos featuring Pinnacle Rock. The boat landing is really a double crater. Just a few more pictures from the summit. Then it's time to go. We say goodbye to the marine iguana. On the way back to the Queen, we'll cruise past Pinnacle Rock. Pinnacle Rock was formed when magma was expelled from an underwater volcano. The sea cooled the lava, which then exploded only to come together again to form the huge rock made up of many thin layers of basalt. Now it's a resting place for sea lions and pelicans and home to a small colony of Galapagos penguins. They're the only wild penguins north of the equator. The species is endangered with a mature population of 1,200 individuals. But recent studies point to the possibility that the penguins might be benefiting from global warming. Then back to the queen for our wetsuits. I can see why the penguins like it here. The water's clear and the sea life is abundant. 
It's relaxing to float through it like a turtle. Back topside again on the Zodiacs headed for a beach walk on Santiago Island. The penguin welcomes us. The black lava provides a good background for the Sally Lightfoot crabs. It's only natural that a lava lizard would be at home here. This lava flow dates to 1897. It's called Pahoa Hoa Lava. The ropey texture is due to the movement of very fluid lava underneath a congealing surface crust. It's easy to imagine this scene with glowing red magma in the cracks and ash spewing from the cinder cone in the background. The patterns and shapes seems infinite in variety. But even in this harsh environment, we find pioneer plants. On the way back to the Queen for dinner, we say goodbye to some of the residents of Santiago Island. 